in the 1970s, when I was DeWitt Clinton Professor of American History at Columbia University, I was invited to give the 1980 Becker Lectures at Cornell. I was honored. Cornell was my alma mater, and Carl Becker was an internationally acclaimed scholar. I arrived at Cornell in the fall of 1939, too late to be able to take any of his courses, but he was pointed out to me with awe as he walked around the campus. In later years, I'd read his books, particularly the seminal, The Heavenly City of the 18th Century Philosophers, and his delightful collection of essays, Every Man His Own Historian. I wrote the Becker Lectures while Mellon Fellow at a remarkable new institution, the National Humanities Center in North Carolina. Early that year at the center, I gave a brief talk about what I proposed to do. I explained that I was planning to lecture in Ithaca on the impact of Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the presidents who succeeded him, three in particular. Harry Truman, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson. I thought of the venture as a routine exercise in political history. But after my talk, two of the fellows, John Sitter and Deborah Sitter, came up to me to say that in their field of literary studies, this was a central theme. That encounter was an enlightening moment. With their encouragement, I read important analyses of poetry by Walter Jackson Bate and Harold Bloom, notably Bloom's Anxiety of Influence. Anxiety struck me at first as a peculiar word. I'd been thinking about my lectures as celebratory, celebrating the impact of FDR's New Deal as inspiring his successors and encouraging them to elaborate on them in their presidencies. But with the insight I had from literary scholars, I increasingly saw how intimidating Roosevelt's initiatives were for those who came after him. The successors I came to see were much like those writers who asked, after Shakespeare has written, how can I do anything new? When a great poet has lived, T.S. Eliot said, Certain things have been done once and for all and cannot be achieved again. That humanistic moment led me to explore other fields as well. In the 19th century, I learned from another fellow at the National Humanities Center, William Newman, composers struggled with Beethoven's huge accomplishments, especially his nine symphonies. Both Gustav Mahler and Anton Bruckner wrote more than nine symphonies, but refused to acknowledge that. Bruckner even titled one of his symphonies Die Nulte, Zero, so that he could evade comparison. I also came to realize how the anxiety of influence had affected political figures in other lands, the impact of the Napoleonic legend in the age of Stendhal on French politicians, the achievements 
of Simon Bolivar on latter-day reformers in South America. Consequently, when I stepped to the lectern on the first night in Ithaca, my lectures were far richer culturally than they would have been. I subsequently expanded the lectures I gave at Cornell into a book, one that carried FDR's influence on his successors far beyond the three presidents with whom I had started out. The lectures in 1980 had coincided with a national political campaign in which, to the surprise of many, Ronald Reagan quoted so extensively from FDR in his acceptance address at the Republican National Convention that the New York Times captioned its lead editorial the next day, Franklin Delano Reagan. My book, in turn, was entitled In the Shadow of FDR, From Harry Truman to Ronald Reagan. Over the more than a third of a century since I delivered those lectures in 1980, I have repeatedly updated the book published by Cornell University Press to relate the experience of successive presidents. The current subtitle of In the Shadow of FDR is From Harry Truman to Barack Obama. And in recent times, in our own day, just as aspiring writers continue to struggle with the anxiety of influence, President Obama has confronted, among many challenges, a persistent question, whether he measures up to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a question that may well determine Barack Obama's legacy, his place in the annals of history.